Hello there, this is Tati from Cool Moms, Cool Tips. Thank you so much for joining us, Pierre. Uh, Pierre is the director of the animated film, The Bad Guys. Yes, hello everybody, hey Tati. So we're gonna dig into this, Pierre, from animator to director. Um, talk to us a little bit about that process and I am really curious to know how difficult was it for you to be a bit hands-off as an animator being now a director? <laughs> Who says I was head and stuff? No, I was head and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole journey has been a, a really enlightened, like a fun one, really, because um, and, and, I never really dreamed or thought about being a director myself. You know, um, when I was studying to be an animator and just discovered what animation was, I, I think I just wanted to be a great animator and that was it. Um, and then, and then, arrive at DreamWorks, started working here, just, and then you start learning the craft of animation with some of the greatest animators that, you know, that, that work here. I mean, like here, like the greatest animators on the planet, really some amazing, amazing artists. And then you, you get trained with them and just, you learn from them. And then, and slowly you decide, you know, you want to learn new stuff. And so you become a supervising animator and just learn the leadership and just lead, leading a small team. And then, and then you just, um, and then you grow to some bigger roles even where you just you have a bigger team with the to, 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 to kind of lead a little bit. Um, and so, you know, again, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a learn, it's a learned process, you know, it's a learning process for me. It's like every single time was like, okay, what is that new challenge or what can I learn out of it? You know? So, you know, slowly ended up, you know, doing storyboard and then character creation and just heading those big animation teams and, and I ended up directing a short film uh, called Bilby, and I loved it so much that I was like, I want to do that again, <laughs> because you're really exposed to everything. And then, and then it's in, like speaking about learning uh, every single step of the way when you direct a film, you're doing screenwriting, script writing, storyboarding, leading teams, directing actors, directing animators you know, reflecting on marketing, whatever. I mean, like, it's so varied that you learn a, at every little day, every day is so varied, you learn everything. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, be, you're being like a taught new stuff every day, basically. And, and that's, this is one of the reasons why I love this job so much, on top of telling stories and just passing on. Absolutely. Messages. But this then, as a, sorry, just to finish up your question, being hands-on or hands-off, yeah, it was like, it, the, the the thing is like I know animation really really well because I've been doing it my whole career. The trick for me was to surround myself with an amazing team that I really would trust. And and I mean, first of all, the teams at Dreamworks are amazing, but but having someone in charge of the team that was so close to me that I was like, just go for it. I trust you. And so it's been like that very easy in a way. And talking about surrounding yourself with a great team, one of the things that stood out for me is the animation style. Um, it's something that we can relate to. It's almost something that I, I can identify with, but I can't put my finger on what the main difference is. Can you? <laughs> That's great. I love that. I love your questions. Um, yeah, it's an animation style you, you haven't really seen too much done here because um, because it's very inspired by Japanese animation and French animation. It's kind of a blend of everything, right? And it's really just like speaking to my own taste and roots, really, as a French man. Um, and it, 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 what's the main difference is like, I, I asked the teams to not use the same amount of video reference that we usually do, which is like very, it becomes quite realistic in the first, in the last few movies we made. I'm not talking about the trolls kind of movies, but like a bit more realistic type of looking films. Um, uh, we tend to be very real in terms of our acting and just reference everything. Uh, Disney does the same and uh, the studios also do the same. But I, I, this time I asked the animators to stylize things much more and really rely on the posing of the characters. And that posing would be inspired by, you know, the Castle of Cagliostro and then the Fulicoli and all these kind of, you know, films that are all about charm, all about the, the, the visual representation of like a silly action or silly acting as opposed to being too detailed and too nuanced, you know, just, just be broad, be caricaturized, be caricatured. Don't necessarily lean too much on the actual physics of, you know, the world. Sometimes you can break physics and just have fun with it. So it was a bit more cartoon, not fully extravagant cartoon. 
and and a cartoon that is inspired more from the European slash Japanese than the American typical cartoon, you know. No, it's oh. fantastic. I loved it. Um, and rebounding a bit on what you're what you're sharing with us, um, beyond the books themselves, what other influences or inspirations did you did you have as you were working on this film? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean. The books obviously were the, the the main framework, and then we wrote the script based on that. Um, but I think for the world itself, you know, the ba the big influences were you know Tarantino movies, uh, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, uh, the Ocean Ocean franchise, you know, Ocean Eleven, Twelve, Thirteen, uh, Gary Chee Snatch, and uh, Lux Dogs to Smoking Barrels, uh, Bo uh, Baby Driver. Uh, the Italian job, you know, the Sting, all of those highest action films, and definitely some Mission Impossible in there. Um, and um, yeah, they, they were the, the main influences in terms of cinema, you know, uh, and it's true homage to these kind of films, definitely. Yes, I, I mean, it's fantastic. But at the same time, um, just like there's a, a few movies that transcend in their genre in becoming like Spice in Disguise was a fantastic way to bring like a James Bond type of movie yeah. into children's world. So how difficult was it for you now that you're mentioning all this influences, oceans, films and everything like this to be able to make a movie that was relatable to all the ages in a family to enable that co-watching? That's um, that was, first of all, not easy. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question but yeah that was like top of the top of the line for us like it's uh, you know it definitely was something that we were really striving to achieve um so one of the rules was never talk down to the children you know it was like if we if we're telling this story let's make sure it's like it's a clever plot clever type of twist turns and it's not such a simple scenario if you think about it uh but then at the same time, make characters that are incredibly endearing, make sure that they have an arc, they have a personality that you can follow, which usually is not the case. If I ask you the arc of the characters or the big message from Ocean Eleven, it's going to be hard for you to tell me what it is, you know, uh, because it's all about a magic trick. Uh, but in our case, it was like, use this kind of framework, but add to it kind of a big emotional stakes. Uh, and I think that allows the children to really connect with those characters. Um, and also the last thing is like we kind of branded that term, but it's like stupid, stupid sophisticated. So it's kind of a <laughs> the whole point was to make it sophisticated and stupid at the same time, so that it really was uh, clear that it was a family movie, uh, but yet it retained some of its coolness and its edge, you know, that is brought it from the references we are we are using, you know. Fantastic. And then um, I'm also curious to know, in working on this project, what were you most excited for people to see or enjoy or grasp when they watched the movie? Um, I mean, obviously, the, the theme uh, is a very important one for me. I mean, the theme of the themes that we are exploring in there, which is like it's a friendship story, but it's also really talking about, you know, so societal acceptance and so it's talking about difference it's talking about redemption second chances like it's talking about you know really understanding who what is the past of someone before judging that person you know so it's like there is like important themes in there that i really like and that i really want to come out of it um and the, the the second thing is obviously you know uh the opportunity to have a movie that is really a gateway for families into the highest genre yeah and lastly is like a movie that really just is a different take on the look of CG animated films, you know. Like we pushed it to make it something different, both music wise, but also visually speaking in the way we shoot this film. It's something you haven't seen before and this is what I really wanted to push for, you know, something different. Well, yeah, you achieved it. It's, it's quite a feat, thank you. Thank um, you so the final question for you is, can we have a sequel? Is there any? <laughs> Look, I'd love, you know, I, I want to see those characters again on the screen. Uh, but I think it's like that decision is not really mine to make, you know, so we're yeah, kind of waiting to see where the studio wants to take it. But if they if they decide to make another one, yeah, I'd be the first one to be super excited about it for sure. Absolutely. Um, um I love to hear that you're ready for it. Fingers yeah. crossed for you and for us. Thank, Thank you very much. We really enjoyed the film and it's a beautiful masterpiece. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Tati. Thank you so much.